Hi, my name is Natalie Vance. I am a physical therapist at Crestman Neurological Rehab, and I am going to be talking with you all today on um, the benefits of exercise and rehabilita rehabilitation as it pertains to Parkinson's disease. So today we're going to be going over just some of the benefits of exercise and how it relates to PD. And then I'll give you a little background on therapy, on PTOT, speech therapy, um, if you've never had that or never heard of it before. So about us at Crestman, so here's a picture of the, of the group, missing probably just a few people, um, but we've just moved into a new clinic space and I'll get into that a little bit later. I've got some more pictures to share with you. Um, beautiful space, we're very excited about that. We have an awesome team of therapists and technicians and front office staff that do an amazing job um, with our clinic and with managing patients and getting people in as quickly as we can. Um, so our goal um, as healthcare providers is goal-oriented, innovative, and evidence-based practice. We aim to educate, advocate, empower, and improve the quality of life for our patients, their families, and our community. Our team of interdisciplinary therapists includes occupational therapists, physical therapists, speech language pathologists, and activity-based technicians. So a little background of physical therapy and occupational therapy, if it's fairly new to you. Um, physical therapy is um, a branch of evidence-based medicine, and it is centered around movement experts who work with patients to improve quality of life through prescribed exercise, hands-on care, and patient education. Um, PT works with you to determine functional goals. And when I say functional, I'm leaning more towards transfers, gait, um, mobility type movement patterns, rather um, looking at the whole picture, rather than just one single area of the body. We're looking at the whole picture and we're looking at functional movement patterns as um, physical therapists in this neurological setting. We're working to improve safety, improve transfer, strength, and balance. Occupational therapy, they work with patients across the lifespan to do ADLs or activities of daily living. These include dressing, bathing, handwriting, fine motor coordination, and strength. OTs can also work to improve cognitive function and visual spatial awareness. So in um, orthopedic type settings, you may have had experience with um, PT or OT, and it does look a little bit different in this neurological setting, especially whenever we're working with folks with Parkinson's. There are certain outcomes that we may do in order to assess Parkinson-specific impairments that we're looking for. Um, and like I said earlier, it's more on a functional base rather than tailoring towards an injury or tailoring towards um, recovering from a surgery. It just looks a little bit different in this neurological setting. We're actually assessing um, movement patterns and bed mobility, getting in and out of a chair, walking, a lot of those things that impact our daily life and that are impacted by Parkinson's, as we know, is more of a functional movement-based disorder. So we're looking at that a little bit, um, a little bit deeper in that level. Um, and then OT, same thing. There's a lot of a lot of specialized outcomes and tests that the OT will do with you to screen for certain impairments that can be related to Parkinson's. Um, handwriting we know is a big one that our folks will come see OT for. Dressing, bathing, anything that's just become difficult, even if it's just slight fine motor coordination skills, those can be affected as well. And that's something that you can talk with your OT about, learn about techniques. Um, tremor is also something that's really um, focused in on as an, o as an OT in this setting. And um, they'll look at tremor and tremor reduction techniques and try to help um, in that way as well. So what sets us apart? I've mentioned some of this. We are um, the physical therapists and our occupational therapists are power certified therapists. Um, Parkinson wellness recovery is what that power stands for was developed um, just a little bit after the LSBT exercises, LSBT big exercises were developed, which some of you all may have heard of. Um, so we are all trained in this power certification and the power course. 
lots of different adaptations that can be performed for this to, again, tailor towards your needs, tailor towards whatever the focus might be with that plane of care um, to really hone in on those very Parkinson specific impairments. This can be tailored as a program as well, or kind of delivered in a more functional way throughout daily tasks and activities. We can include this. As I mentioned, the LSBT big exercises are available. We do know those, we are familiar with those, and we can introduce those if necessary. All the physical therapists in our clinic are neurological clinical specialists. So all of our full-time staff, full-time physical therapy staff have gone through extra training to take a board certification exam and get board certified as an NCS. And that's, like I said, a neurological clinical specialist. So we've taken extra training to learn more about these disorders, learn more about the neurological field in general, and really work to advocate for this profession, get out in the community, deliver resources and availability um, of this specific training. So it's really, really um, special to us that we have all NCS trained staff at the clinic, and we're very proud of that. And and happy to offer that because it is a really unique and special, um, special thing that we have to offer as part of our as part of our clinic. And then I mentioned the Speak Out program, so we do have the Speak Out trained SLPs. So some exciting news, as I alluded to and mentioned earlier, we have a new clinic space. So I wanted to include some photos of this. These have been in the marketing handouts. These have been in the newspaper um, as we started to open this clinic, and it's really a beautiful space to walk into. We're really, really happy that we have the opportunity to work here. Um, so as you can see on the left part of your screen, this is just when you get off the elevators and a really inviting space, really open, lots of light windows. It's beautiful. We love it. And then as you can see on the right side of your screen, this is one of our OTs. Adrienne Humphrey, she is there working with a patient in our new ADL space. Um, we do have this solo harness that is available for lots of different needs. If balance is an issue and it's something that you want to work on but don't necessarily feel comfortable standing for a long period of time, this is an option. So just wanted to highlight that she does have this harness availability in her ADL kitchen, a working kitchen to be able to practice baking, cooking, anything um, that may be something you'd like to work on that might be part of your goals. So our clinic does see other neurological disorders too. So you may see some photos or things like that of other, of other types of diagnoses in the pictures too, but there's just to highlight some of the equipment that we have. Um, and can be, like I said, tailored towards the individual based on an evaluation. I wanted to highlight this beautiful ADL kitchen that Adrian is so proud of. And then some new equipment that we have in this new clinic. Now, these are not pictures from the clinic, so we don't actually have it all yet, but it's going to be delivered. So we have on the far left of the screen, the zero G body weight support system. So lots of high level balance training we can do on there. Um, it's an overground body weight support system. We can work on walking, balance, treadmill training, and lots of neat activities that can be done in this harness. And we have it going the length of our clinic. And the next picture you'll see is the, the GEO robotic gait system. So we will be getting that um, as far as a gait trainer in a robotic type system, which is really, really cool. We're very excited to have that delivered. And then as part of our therapy, we work on balance training and vestibular training too, which can be associated with Parkinson's at times if there's any dizziness or if there's balance issues in certain systems that we're looking, to, looking for, we're assessing, we may see a need for more focused vestibular training, which is in the inner ear, the eyes, and how that system kind of works together to help with balance. So we have this Vertex system on the right-hand part of your screen that is going to be delivered soon, hopefully, too, and we'll get trained on. And it's going to be really, really neat to be able to challenge, again, some kind of virtual reality balance training, high-level balance, and really kind of hone in on that. And then at the bottom, you'll see this is the driving simulator that we will have in the clinic soon. And this is something that people are very excited about. We get a lot of questions about that. And this will help 
Um, this would help folks just be able to simulate an actual driving experience and see and assess the ability to do that, if it's safe, if there's things we need to work on. So this is something we're really excited about to be able to utilize with patients as well. Our program goal overall um, as therapists in this setting is to track your function. So we know with Parkinson's that this particular disorder, this movement disorder, it's not gonna go away. But what we do know about it is we can make improvements. We can improve, we can get better. We can kind of fluctuate in that scale of where we fall in those different levels of Parkinson's, if you will. So we can definitely improve the function, whether, um, you know, like I said, whether it's going through getting in and out of a chair, walking, getting in and out of bed, those types of activities are things that we're gonna work on because those are things that are done all day, every day, but can really be impacted by Parkinson's, by the slowness and the stiffness of the movement that affects that movement pattern. So our goal is to get folks into therapy as early as possible because if we want that early intervention and we want to get started on this um, early on so we can establish goals, provide education in order to prevent the decline of this disease. So lots of research out there to support exercise and medication, kind of working together to slow the progression of Parkinson's. That is the whole goal behind getting in with a therapist and getting in that consultation of what exercise is gonna be most appropriate for you based on your needs. So we will do outcomes, whether it's balance, whether it's walking, whether it's more transfer-based, um, high level balance, more functional training, we will establish goals and develop outcome measures to be able to track that function and see if we're making improvements, we'll be able to really track that for you all. And then provide education on home exercises, on the community resources and things that will be available to you that we think may fit, fit your needs as the patient. We also, like to something really unique about our clinic too and about our um, care for for patients in the setting we do every four to six month follow-ups so similar to the way that you're going to follow up with your neurologist on medication management and things like that we're going to do four to six month follow-ups sometimes longer depending on the need um, with your therapist. So after we've gone through our plan of care, whether we've determined through our evaluation, okay, we need to spend this plan of care on balance. So that's going to be our focus. We're going to focus on balance. We're going to do our outcome measures and then we'll track those. So a month into our plan of care, we reassess and we'll see okay, we'll see the balance is improving. We still need to work on a few things. Now we'll move into potentially the next month of our plan of care. And then maybe by the end of that second month, we've reached all of the goals. We said, okay, we set these six goals for you. We've met them all. This is where we are. This is our home exercise program for you. This is what I want you to continue and provide community resources and classes that they can continue as well. And then we'll determine which follow-up time is going to be the most appropriate. So four to six month follow-ups with your therapist, being able to come back in and then we reassess those same outcome measures and we say, okay, hey, we're doing a little bit better in this area, but we need to improve a little bit more in this area, whether it could be walking, it could be um, getting in on the chair, it could just be a different part of balance that we haven't looked at yet. Maybe reactive balance, being able to catch yourself if you lose your balance. So we will look at that, hone in on that a little bit more, and then determine, do we need to continue therapy at that follow-up time, or can we educate on exercises, make a few adjustments, and then set another follow-up? So that's kind of how we are able to track function is through some of those outcome measures. It's a very comprehensive team approach. So we can assess with physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech language pathology as necessary. And a continuity of care is kind of our big focus in the setting. We have weekly meetings with our neurologists to um, discuss with the rehab team if we have questions, if he's got questions regarding a patient, if we've got questions regarding a patient, that's something that we do is 
um, talk about those questions and concerns if we have any to ensure that we get the best patient care for, um, for our patients that come to see us so we can really work on tracking progress and um, making sure we relay communication back and forth as needed. So we've talked a little bit about kind of the structure of what physical therapy and occupational therapy may look like in this neurological setting. So how can it help? What actually are we looking for as it relates to Parkinson's? So impairments specific to PD, and these are some you may have heard of, um, or some you may have not heard of, but these four kind of cardinal symptoms or cardinal impairments that we may see and that we're gonna be testing for include bradykinesia, which is a small, slow movement pattern. So over time, you may see that it's just taking more time to do things, to reach into the cabinet, to grab a box of cereal, to get up out of the chair, to just taking more time to brush your teeth in the morning. Little things like that that you may notice over time that it's like, man, it just seems like this is taking five minutes longer than it used to. So that's that slowness of movement coming from that Brady kinetic type movement pattern. And rigidity also plays into this is the next symptom down. This is a stiffness in the muscle, a rigid tone in the muscle it can show up where the muscle feels like it's just catching as you move, um, move it through a range of motion, just can kind of feel like a cogwheel type pattern, or it can be really stiff and really, really hard to move. Um, we call that more like a lead pipe type rigidity. Postural instability is something that's really something that we'll look at because this can really contribute to falls. So we want to look into this quite a bit also. And this is more balance. This is kind of knowing where your body is in space and being able to recognize if you're losing your balance and how to catch yourself. Oftentimes what we see with Parkinson's is that these reaction times become just a little bit delayed. And before we even realize we've started to lean too far back or lose our balance backwards, we're, we're falling and it's hard to catch ourselves. So that's something that we can work on and work on recognizing where you are in space and how to catch yourself and how to work on those balance, um, balance systems, balance reactions, something we can really look at. And then tremor. This is the common symptom with Parkinson's resting tremor, where it's just a tremor that's at rest that can sometimes get worse with stress or any sort of exacerbation of um, activity. So this can be somewhat bothersome. It sometimes bothers folks, and it's usually treated a little bit more with uh, medication. Exercise can help as well, and you may see a slight increase in tremor with exercise just because of the stress of the movement, but it should go back to its baseline. Something we can work on with strengthening type exercises, fine motor coordination, strengthening of the arms, strengthening of the legs that can help reduce tremor as well. So we will look at those impairments. We will look to see if they're present. We'll look to see how we can treat those and how they're affecting mobility as a whole and really try to develop a plan tailored towards the individual and which symptoms they're presenting with. Treatment of these specific impairments are centered around amplitude. If you've ever been to therapy, if you've ever met me or met anyone in this um, kind of setting, you've probably heard the word big before. We say that pretty often. So when we think about amplitude, we think about opening up, being big with some of these movement patterns. And we talked a little bit about the bradykinesia, the slowness, the smallness of the movement pattern. So we want to exaggerate that movement. We wanna be bigger, we wanna open up, um, think about those bigger movement patterns as we move through sit to stands, walking, things like that. Um, and that's something that we will really look at. The power program that what I mentioned earlier, the Parkinson's wellness recovery is centered around amplitude big movements, as well as the LSBT big exercises. We will look into flexibility and develop treatment interventions for flexibility and um, working on rotation and extension. So when we say those two terms, rotation can be affected by the stiffness and the rigidity in the trunk. So having trouble getting our trunk rotation impacts the arm swing when we're walking. So we think about sometimes we may notice that our arms, one arm or both arms not moving a whole lot when we're walking. 
that kind of goes back to the trunk rotation and the stiffness. So we'll emphasize that and we're emphasizing extension. So what we know about Parkinson's, it's more of a flexion-based disease where we want to just, it kind of wants to pull you forward, get smaller, flex forward, and we want to open up. We want to be big and focus on the muscles in the back for our extension, for our postural extension, more upright posture. And then aerobic exercise. So intensity is key. So we will work with patients to determine what is an appropriate heart rate level to be at with aerobic exercise? How hard are you working? What's the most appropriate exercise plan for you in this aerobic capacity, cardio capacity, um, and find the most, the most intense yet beneficial exercise for that patient. And it's gonna vary for everyone. So something else to add on to this talk that is new with our, as we move to our new clinic and as we've kind of been really highlighting the idea of this multidisciplinary approach, continuity of care, and kind of bringing the whole team in together. This is a really special um, clinic that has started within the last month. This is a new multidisciplinary clinic started by Dr. Phillips in September of this year, 2021. And it is centered around consultation, medication management, and exercise prescription, and education provided by the medical team. So he has developed this clinic for, for some of his Parkinson's patients to come in for a, it says, it's about a two to three hour appointment. However, you get to see the neurologist, you get to see a physical therapist, and a speech language pathologist. We, so I am part of that, and then our speech language pathologist, she will do screening as well. So we come in and do education on exercise, we're going to do testing for balance, testing for walking, a screening tool to consult on um, the exercise prescription needed for you as the patient, and if therapy is necessary in the future, or if it's okay to get the prescription of exercise that day and then hold off until a follow up appointment. Um, speech language pathology can do a cognitive screening tool and a, kind of a bedside swallow assessment as well as a voice assessment to be able to screen for any need for therapy in that setting. And then a sit down with social work to go over any sort of psychosocial things that might be going on, um, discussing some scales and some questionnaires with, with the social work, social worker, and then um, kind of all of us come together at the end of that appointment and we say, okay, hey, we think there's a need for PT or um, we think there's a need for speech therapy right now, but we could probably hold off on PT or vice versa and kind of work to get that patient in all at once. So we've kind of done these screening tools. We're able to sit down, talk with them for a good amount of time to educate and then kind of get all this information, all this consultation in one appointment, which is a really great opportunity for, for these folks. And so far we've had great results with it and folks have been really happy. So we're very um, thankful for Dr. Phillips for getting this going and excited to see where it goes um, as well as he sits down and goes down with the patients to go over consultations of medication management and a lot of the the things that he will spend time on in his appointment as well. So it just allows for more of a comprehensive approach and um, take a little bit more time to get everything needed in one appointment rather than several appointments spread out. Um, and then for the multidisciplinary clinic, there are yearly follow-ups with other follow-ups with Dr. Phillips or the nurse practitioner interspersed in there as well. Focused again on tracking function, meeting these quality measures through the Movement Disorder Society recommendation to improve outcomes for the patient. So if you haven't caught on this one already, I will come back to it. Exercise is appropriate for all stages of the disease and will be tailored to where you are and what your goals are. So no matter if it's a week after you've been diagnosed with Parkinson's or five, 10 years after diagnosis, it is appropriate to get started with an exercise program or to work on or make adjustments to an exercise program, get consults to figure out which one is gonna be the best for you and we'll make goals to find out what's gonna be the most beneficial program for you in order to um, just improve function overall.
Well, thank you all so much for your attention today and for listening. I really do appreciate it. And I've included my email address at the bottom here. So if you do have questions about my presentation or if you'd like me to elaborate on anything, I would be happy to. My email is natalie.vance at nortonhealthcare.org. And you're welcome to reach out to me if you have questions regarding exercise or physical therapy, OT or speech therapy. I'm happy to answer those for you or get you to the right person who can. So thank you for listening and have a great rest of your day.